Hello everyone, in today's video I'm kind of going to be doing a combination of looking at how to chop up um, musical loops and on those chopped up loops how to use a sequencer to gain quick inspiration for ideas as opposed to playing it in yourself. So I have your basic kick, clap and hat pattern and I've taken a synth loop from the, one of the PIV sample packs. Um, it sounds like this so far. So like a lot of, a lot of like people starting out might, um, just keep the synth like that. Um, with very minimal effects and that's where the argument comes in that people don't like people using loops because someone might just loop this for the entire track something like that um, but um, this kind of technique basically shows how you can manipulate so you can keep all those really nice sounds but you can alter the the melody or the rhythm to kind of make it your own and not just Aaron Volta, who was the guy that created the packs. Um, so basically, instead of dropping a loop straight into audio, um, you could I you could be like chopping it up and stuff, but that's probably another video. Um, so instead of doing that, you could let me just find where I located it. Uh, Basically, the idea is that you um, drop it into a simpler. So, if I just mute this. So basically, the simpler has a few modes. So like, playback. Um, just make sure my... Oh, it's because this is on. So, um, so the classic mode, if I play C, if I hold C, it will play back the whole loop, which you don't necessarily want when you're putting a loop into a sample, uh, simpler. It is the simpler, it's not the sampler um, that you use. You drop a loop in there, you've got these different modes, um, be able to incite talks about these modes in a lot more detail, but the one you want is slices, which will basically slice the whole loop into different um, different segments that can be played back. Depending on what note you're playing on the keyboard. So it slices it into like 127. Um, and you can basically, in with these two, settings choose um how the algorithm slices up so basically with transients it slices it um based on the samples transients and simple like the way i see it is like basically the loudest segments of the sample so sensitivity you can basically dial back how much it actually detects. So as I move it up, um, the 35, it detects that as perhaps the loudest part of the wave. Um, so if I just, I'll just turn this on, but I'll talk about it in a bit. Um, I'll just put a sequencer on to save me having to play the notes. Um, so basically, the lower the sensitivity, the less it will detect. It 
it's, you'll, you'll be hearing it sounds a bit rubbish. Um, so that's pretty much how hectic do you want your lip to be. That's the way I see it. And the different transient modes, um, the transients by transient beats is more like rhythmic. I'm just going to change. Oh, hang on. Uh... So it's playing on C. Um, so basically, I'm not going to play it in. That sequence is playing a sequence of notes, which is telling it which. So transients is by different transients, which can get some quite interesting results. It can also sound quite bad at the same time. Um, because it's automatically trying to detect levels within the sample to decide how it's sliced up. Um, so I would go for beats, which, as I said, is basically based on beat divisions. Um, so you can decide the timing of how it slices it. Um, does it chop it in sixteenths? Does it chop it in eighths? So basically play around with your timings. I quite like it on quarters. Um, and then the other ones are regions is like equal. And even like, you basically just need to play around with something that you find that works. Um, so that's kind of like how you would chop the sample up using a sampler, pretty much how a lot of people would sample stuff um, on like their hardware. But then, save you having to, you could in theory start when that's not on, if I just... Play. You can as well um, manually choose where the starting points of samples are. So if you're if you're wanting to be really precise, you can go in and move everything so that, as you can see, there's a gap here, so that everything when you're playing the notes has the right hack. Um, or you could just go for the imperfections. Um, so. The way, so you could play it in, or you could, if kind of touching on the inspiration side, you could um, load like a sequencer, which is obviously going to play the notes for you. So that's the pitch. I'm using the APC, by the way. So that's basically the notes, which link to that. Velocity. That's octave. What octaves it playing those notes at? That's the duration of the note. And repeat is basically um, like a glitch effect, which I don't want. So I'm just.
So I've got something that I kind of like. Um, so what I would do then is bounce it out so I can actually um, visualize what I've done. So I'll just solo that and record that. I don't know what... Alright, I know why. I did the wrong one. I did the original. Um, So then I would do that. And then... Bounce that out. Boost its volume. So now you've got a totally different loop. It's a bit more hectic, but that's just the way I've set it. You can make it as minimal as you want with like the sensitivity and um, obviously the, the notes that are on the generator, I've, I'm pretty sure I put. Depending on the timing setting, if you do beats, um, I could try another one to be fair. So I've clicked random during the recording process, which might make quite interesting. Add some effects. Um, so yeah, we basically, by chopping it up, we've been able to keep the instrumentation, which no one really cares what what samples you use, instrumentation wise. Um, I feel like the common argument for loops is to do with the rhythm and the melodic aspect like people don't people don't want i suppose there is a case to be with with like sound with like the sample as well like you people don't want you to use loops because you might sound too much like the piv guys um but obviously that depends on what genre you're going for anyway we all have like our influences but like by doing it this way, you're putting your own spin on the rhythm and you're putting your own spin on the mel melody. And who really cares what sample, like what instrument you're using? So if, maybe I'll just do one more. Try and find that guy. Just trying to find a loop. Not that one. Oh yeah, I'll use that one. Um, so do something similar, drop the loop in, and then let's just addition it. Uh, 
It still sounds kind of like the original. Like, I wouldn't worry necessarily about getting it so different from the original, but as long as you put your own spin on it, you can always do more with effects late, later on. Make it totally unrecognizable, if that's what you want to do. So I'm doing, I'm doing the transient this time round. So this is a much more minimal loop. I'm just going to delete that. Maybe not. Maybe not delete it. I'll just keep it in. So let's move that down and resample this. So it's got, so it's captured those two elements. What the first one's like the sweep, and the second one's like the, the roads. But it's got a totally different, totally different rhythm. So that's kind of what the idea is. It's about capturing the original sound, but putting your own spin on the rhythm. And the melodies. So you can see how there's like endless possibility of this and it just kind of helps you to put your own spin on samples as opposed to just dropping them in like there's not really there's not an issue with like dropping them in like especially if you're in like the early stages you in what I used to do a lot basically drop in these loops that like some artists spend a lot of time on and there's some good quality sounds in there um, and like especially when you're lost for inspiration you you don't necessarily think you can't necessarily think of a melody um, and the easy way is always just to drop them in um, and see where things go and then you build your project around that loop and then when you delete that loop it just sounds like it's missing something um, that's at least what I, I've had experience with, but this kind of gives you your own kind of unique spin on, on whatever genre you're trying to replicate. So if it's minimal house in this, it gives you your own, like, spin on it, I guess. Like, so yeah, that's pretty much going to be it for this one. I hope that helped give you some idea of how to manipulate loops um, and also how to use sequencers to gain inspiration um, for those when you've chopped those loops up. Um, so yeah, be sure to like, comment and subscribe and all that stuff people always tell you to do. Um, I'll see you in the next one.